Well, hello boys and girls. It's when I feel like a clock and here I am doing the video marathon in between my naps. Having a little bit of sustenance. Mm. Needing to get my energy up for all of this excitement and, and frolic. I'm doing NHL predictions in the playoffs, predicting every series. You don't see prognos pro prognosticators. How do you say that anyways? Prognosticators do that very often, do you? No, no you don't. This is my NHL Pearls of Wisdom, and I'm the Pearls of Wisdom guy. And I'm going to give you Pearls of Wisdom on your lap about the New Jersey Devils and the Tampa Bay Lightning. I have done the Pittsburgh-Philadelphia series. I've done the Toronto-Boston series. I've done the Winnipeg series. I'm sure you've watched them all. Why wouldn't you? Get out your stuff. School books so you can learn these fine lessons get yourself well lubed I'll wait I'm gonna this is my uh, the lamp the mighty lamp of correctness and proper picks right correct picks the correct picks lamp so you, you know that it's legit Okay, boys and girls, here we go. New Jersey Devils versus the Tampa Bay Lightning. New Jersey Devils were a surprise team this year. Oh, by the way, uh, Larry Fernworth from uh, uh, Craburn, Louisiana, writes, how come you do not give stats such as goals scored and such in your videos? Well, the reason for that, my boys and girls, is because... Most people deal, take care of those stats, stats themselves. You're, the true hockey fans are always looking at the stats. I don't think you need me for that. I can say that a team is good at offense or a team is good at defense or what have you. And I also, take, I also pay attention to fancy stats as well. But I don't need to bore you with all that. You can check out the fancy stats, stats if you want. I can, I'll, I'll say sometimes, oh, their possession numbers are fantastic. But I don't even mention it. Not even how many goals they scored in a season or what, how many they, shots they had against and all of that. It all comes down to were they good offensively or were they not good offensively. Um, New Jersey Devils, for instance, were uh, a good offensive team. They had lots of shots against. Um, I can just go down their roster and pretty much predict that's going to happen before the season started. Here's the thing. The Tampa Bay, New Jersey series, it comes down to this. New Jersey's not a bad team. They, they built themselves up quickly, a very good forward core. You know, Nico Heischer, uh, Zayak, who is a lot of people, it's, he's a weird player. He's overrated and underrated at the same time. A lot of people say they don't like because of his big contract. They don't like him because he doesn't produce that much offense. But he's a fantastic defensive centerman. <clears throat> Is he worth the money? Uh, I, don't, I don't know. if he, he might be a little bit overpaid because he doesn't wow the audience, the crowd. But for what you, when you, every team needs a guy like him. And he's fantastic. And they have another guy named Pavel Zaka who's, they're, they're using as their third line center who looks a lot like Zayak. Their defense, their their um, depth up the middle is great, but not offensively great. But they will beat you defensively. It, it's an amazing core of, uh, that they have of players because they have weaknesses and strengths um, in odd positions. Taylor Hall, awesome year. Playing with Nico Heischer is fantastic. He has put this team on his back and led them to where they are right now. Jesper Bratt fell on the left side, fell off at, at the end of the year. He's just a young kid. Probably won't see much in the playoffs, but you will see a lot of Patrick Maroon, probably a lot of Grabner. Good depth. Good depth. Their biggest strength is their forward depth. Palmieri, Marcus Johansson is injured, probably won't play. Drew Stafford, Neeson, not the best but serviceable. Defensively, Sammy Vatten was a fantastic pickup for them. Um, they took a, a level, of, a area of strength up the middle, picked up Vatten. Um, Damon Severson is doesn't get enough credit for how good of a player he's becoming. Um, Will Butcher is a good power play guy. He's learning the game in the uh, on five on five. He'll be fine, but 
see, you, you just have a lot of strengths but weaknesses. Strengths but weaknesses because you've got a young lineup and you've been filling holes to try to get this team to go where they are going to be, which they are not yet. John Moore, very underrated, serviceable defenseman. Uh, they picked up Marco Mueller to play in their bottom six, seven. He's fine. Now, the the coaching that these guys have received, uh, I've got this year, to, to motivate them to be what they are has been top-notched. And to me, motivation and drive is what got New Jersey to where they were, over more over the skill level that they have. And Corey Schneider, who, if you look at his numbers, they don't look great, but with a defense that is pretty leaky as they are, he did fantastic. Now, Tampa Bay Lightning, on the other hand, uh, Tampa Bay struggled after the trade that, uh, Brian McDonough, getting Brian McDonough. It seemed to kind of screw up their chemistry. Um, I don't know exactly why that would be, but I'm thinking in the playoffs this will all come together. Hedman, McDonough, Sergeyev, Strawman. New Jersey's got nothing on that defense. Just those four players alone. Uh, Dan Girardi's exper playoff experience with Braden Coburn on the 5-6 spot is spot on. Um, especially for a series in a series like this, Andre Vasilevsky could very well have won the Vesna this year. Kind of slipped down the down the uh, stretch and probably won't. But now the one strength that New Jersey has that is offensive depth. Unfortunately, this was probably not the team that they wanted to go up against because there's only one other team in the league, as far as I'm concerned, that has better offensive depth than the Tampa Bay Lightning, and that is the Winnipeg Jets. Stamkos, who is injured right now, I can't remember if he's going to be playing early on in the, early on or not. I'm pretty sure he's going to be back. Uh, even if he's not, let's say Stamkos isn't back right away, okay? Braden Point, Tyler Johnson, Cedric Paquette, and this Anthony Sorelli kid. Holy shit, dude. I, they, Stevie Eiserman and his staff and their drafting, they picked it up from Detroit, I, I guess, because it has been Freaking unbelievable. This Sorelli kid is going to be an excellent centerman. The Braden Point, Taylor Johnson, and Anthony Sorelli for the future, even if you didn't have Stamkos, is a possible Stanley Cup uh, team up the middle already. Um, Palat, Gord, Killorn, and Kunitz on the left side. Like, holy shit, man. Really, what do I need to say about that? JT Miller, Callahan. Corey Conacher has had a great year. Good for him. Um, it just, as much as New Jersey is good on, uh, on depth, it doesn't even come close. Tampa has them in every area of the game besides maybe coaching. Uh, and uh, Vasilevsky Schneider might be a wash. But besides that, Tampa takes this, no problems. New Jersey's heart might get them two games, but I'm, I'm going to say Tampa Bay wins in five. Anyways, boys and girls, that's my full 42. The only way that Tampa Bay loses, by the way, is if Vasilevsky goes down in any way. Because Budai, Budai and Deming, I do not have any faith in at all. Whereas in New Jersey, if their number one goes down, Kincaid is a much more serviceable backup. That's about the only place New Jersey has Tampa Bay. Watch for my other videos. Hit the subscribe get button. Get yourself a vat of Jaime's Body Lube. It's the best there. I said it. And a vat and a My Pearls of Wisdom necklace because everybody loves a pearl necklace. Have a great day. Lots of love to you.